Straight ahead on UTD TV News, UT Dallas celebrates its first Nobel Prize winner. UTD men are spotted around campus in Felix. Fundraising sites are on the rise. Hello and thank you for tuning in to UTD TV News. I'm Priya Gidvani. At the top, Dr. Azia Sankar, a biochemist at the University of North Carolina, is UTD's first alum to win the Nobel Prize. He is one of three researchers who were awarded the 2015 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Their research looks at how cells repair damaged DNA and preserve genes. Experts believe that this research could eventually lead to better cancer drugs. This achievement marks a milestone for UTD as we begin to make our name known. It's not a common sight when you see a group of young men wearing heels around campus, but here at UTD, that's exactly what happens every year. Last Friday, members of the Interfraternity Council alongside the Health and Women's Centers hosted an event called A Walk in Her Shoes. The men of the Interfraternity Council were the main participants of the event. They walked around wearing heels for about a mile through the mall in order to bring awareness to issues such as sexual assault, rape, domestic violence, and gender issues against women. Even administration and the Multicultural Center joined in on the walk. If you're interested, check out itsonus.org and amileinhershoes.org to learn more about how to take a stand against issues faced by women. UTD students support each other not only emotionally, but also financially. GoFundMe accounts, as well as other fundraising sites, seem to be on the rise recently. Senior reporter Shravya Bopuri had the opportunity to find out more about these sites. With rising college tuition rates, prospective students and current students are always on the lookout for new scholarship money. Scholarships are formally given out through the university, supporting businesses and organizations. However, recently there has been a trend where people are starting to fundraise money for scholarships. Recently, an EMBA student here at UTD started a fundraiser last year in honor of his deceased friend. Through this effort, he raised more than $11,000 for students to use. This method brings to attention fundraising sites such as GoFundMe.com, which is a website where people can post donation pages. Recently, there have been more sites like this that are endorsing fundraisers for college money, along with fundraisers for more serious causes. Our very own students have their own opinion on this matter. Um, I think raising money on GoFundMe.com for our scholarships is a great idea. A lot of students are low on funds these days, so it's a good way for everybody to help each other out. These donations made by people on these sites can be put into use for students who are seeking scholarships for school. However, is this type of fundraising appropriate to do? Well, there are real donation pages asking for money for more serious causes like cancer. I think that as long as people want to support things like scholarships on GoFundMe, that it's fine. I mean, they choose where they put their money. While these efforts can bring up various views, the scholarship money raised through fundraisers are benefiting scholarship-seeking students and encouraging them to stay more active in school and in their academics. Construction on UTD's Brain Performance Institute began Wednesday night with the groundbreaking. University administrators, faculty, staff, and students celebrated with dinner and live music. The building will be located near the Center for Brain Health on Mockingbird Lane. The proposed opening date for the center is spring 2017. Also in Dallas, a former district attorney's office employee has filed a petition to remove district attorney Susan Hawk from her position. The petition filed by Hawk's former administrative chief, Cindy Stormer, comes after Hawk took more than two months off of work to treat her depression. Hawk admitted that she has gotten treatment from painkillers as well. In addition, Stormer said Hawk frequently exhibited paranoia and at one point kept a $22,500 check on a public account for more than two months because she said she thought it was on her pay stub. In the suit, Stormer claims that Hawk is unfit to serve because of her drug abuse, among several other issues. Sports producer Katia Guillaume gives us an update on what's going on with our athletes. Wins are what they are looking for and wins are what they are getting. I'm talking about your UT Dallas volleyball team. With 10 straight wins, there's no way of stopping them now. The 20th ranked volleyball team won its 10th match in a row last Thursday night, sweeping rival University of Dallas three sets to none. Freshman Kristen Schott matched her season high with 13 kills and 10 digs, making her the leading scorer of the night. Schott was later named the American Southwest Conference Volleyball Offensive Player of the Week, making her the fourth different comment to be honored by the ASC this season, alongside teammates Abby Barth, Kayla Jordan, and Faina Zhang. Comments are looking to continue their winning streak this weekend at the ASC Crossover Tournament in Tyler. There's two back-to-back -to -back games today. 
first one against Harden Simmons at 2.30, McMurray at 7, and finishing off the tournament against Saul Ross State on Saturday at 3. The men's soccer team are now 4-0 in the American Southwest Conference after their last win at Howard Paid last weekend. The now 13th ranked team are tied with UT Tyler in conference standings, but are just two wins shy from the school records of consecutive victories. The wins do not stop there, and the women's soccer team cruised to an 8-1 win over Saul Ross State. Commons scored late in the first half, not giving up a single goal, put up five more in the second half, and only giving up one. Visit commonsports.utdallas.edu for schedules, score, and anything sports around campus. Preseason is here, and the talk around campus is that everyone is excited. You know I'm talking about the NBA. Preseason has officially begun on October 2nd, and we are just weeks away from regular season on October 27th. Kobe's back, but the Lakers only won one game. Your reigning NBA champions, the Golden State Warriors, are 1-1 one one this season, and your Dallas Mavericks are 0-3. And, and I would love to hear your thoughts and predictions for this NBA season. Share your thoughts with me on Twitter at UTDTV. An NBA schedule is up on ESPN.com. For UTDTV, I am Katia Guillaume. And Houston Bush InBev, known for brewing Budweiser, announced his plan to buy rival Saab Miller, known for brewing Miller Lite. After months of negotiation and four declined offers, and Houston Bush will acquire its main rival for the price tag of $104 billion. If this deal is greenlit by regulators and shareholders, this will be the largest brewing company in the world. Senior reporter Shravya and reporter EJ had the latest in entertainment. Thanks, Priya. Today we were talking about some of the repercussions of entertainment and art. Sometimes it's all fun and games until somebody gets hit by a giant wheel. At around 1.30 p.m. on Monday, October 12th, a State Fair employee was struck in the leg by a wheel that came off of one of the midway rides. We can say that the Crazy Mouse roller coaster went a little bit too crazy that afternoon. The worker who is unnamed was taken to the Baylor University Medical Center in Dallas. While in the midst of shutting down the ride, however, two people were stuck for a couple of hours with employees even bringing them water due to the heat. Crazy Mouse has been shut down, and it is unclear when it will reopen. Fortunately, the, wo the woman was released the same day after the treatment for non-life-threatening injuries. In other ride-or-die news, filming for Made for USA Network's new TV series, Queen of the South, blocked traffic in downtown Dallas. The series, based on a Telemundo, is scheduled to release in 2016, directed by Charlotte Sealing, and we hope she doesn't reach the ceiling of her talent. The story follows a young woman fleeing from Mexico and settling in Spain to become the world's greatest drug smuggler. Filming ended on Wednesday, however, so don't worry about the traffic. Something even more terrifying than Dallas traffic, Halloween is coming up. Some of the top haunted attractions here in Dallas that you can check out include the notorious Cutting Edge Haunted House. Which received world's largest haunted attraction and world's largest walk-through haunted house according to the 2015 Guinness Book of World Records. And if you want some more local attractions, the Dark Hour Haunted House in Plano has a more classic, traditional haunted vibe. For those of you who love country as much as Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you can check out the Crypt Haunted House located in Farmersville. Last year, one daring couple got married there. You can say that they got a little newly webbed. Stay safe and have fun this Halloween. I'm EJ. And I'm Stravia. Downtown Richardson is picking up. The first food truck park in Richardson had its grand opening just a few weeks ago. You can now enjoy a light lunch or dinner at the park right off of Arapaho Road and Greenville Avenue. Small but lively, the park has two large patio seating areas and over 20 food trucks swinging by. You can drop by anytime from 11.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. every day, even stay until midnight on Fridays and Saturdays. The park is the perfect place for a relaxed and delicious evening, and it isn't something you want to miss out on. One of the biggest prisoner releases in U.S. history is about to happen. The Justice Department is preparing to release roughly 6,000 inmates from federal prisons at the end of this month. This is an effort to reduce overcrowding and to give less severe punishments to nonviolent drug dealers. The idea is that prisoners who were sentenced during a tough on crime era shouldn't serve harsher punishments than they would serve today. Webb, Sanders, and Clinton were three of the figureheads at the first Democratic presidential debate that happened this week. They talked about gun control, Syria, income inequality, college, and Edward Snowden. Unlike the Republicans, the Democrats seem to agree on most of these issues. Keep watching for more updates on the election. Thanks again for watching UTD TV. For all things news, sports, and entertainment, visit us at www.utdtv.com. Be sure to join us again in two weeks and have a great evening.
week, we were in Fair Park visiting the State Fair of Texas, full of games and foods from all across the state, full of all your savory and sweet delights, some of the classics and some of the new foods.